Hi there and welcome to My Week. I'm Christy McDonald. We are coming to you today from the fourth annual Detroit Policy Conference at the Motor City Casino and Hotel. It is hosted by the Detroit Regional Chamber and brings together business community and political leaders to talk about revitalizing the city. So coming up, Mayor Mike Duggan joins us to talk about rebuilding Detroit after bankruptcy and his plans going forward. Plus, we all want good schools for our children. We will talk with Governor Snyder's advisor, Paul Pasterak, about the state of education in Michigan. And a conversation about working together to maintain Detroit's momentum. It is all coming up for you on my week. Well, this week, Mayor Mike Duggan presented the fiscal 2016 budget to City Council. It is a budget that was prepared by former emergency manager Kevin Orr, but it's up to the mayor to make sure the budget is balanced. Today, the mayor delivered opening remarks at the policy conference, and we are pleased to have him with us here today. Mayor Duggan, thanks so much for joining us on My Week. Thank you for having me, Christy. And of course, we have our My Week contributors, Nolan Finley, the Detroit News, Stephen Henderson of the Detroit Free Press. All right, let's jump in. You started off the policy conference saying the us versus them politics is over. There's a new conversation happening here in Detroit and in the region. What did you mean by that? Well, I think if you just look at the stories on TV and the newspapers, how little of the nasty, divisive language you've seen in the last year, uh, it, it has changed dramatically. And it's allowed us to do things like pass a really good bill uh, to deal with scrap metal on a bipartisan basis, to, to deal, to pass a, uh, a bill that is going to allow us to head off thousands of these foreclosures by restructuring the payments, another bill uh, that has created a tax-free zone to bring new manufacturing business to the east side. Every one of them passed with Republican and Democrat, city, suburban, labor business partnership. And I think, I think people in the city are embracing this term. So why is that happening then? What has been the change, do you think, in the past year? Well, I think the change occurred in the campaign trail, in which we had two candidates who offered two different approaches, and the people of the city spoke in, in pretty big uh, numbers. But now I think uh, you can see uh, pretty much everybody embracing this direction. It's far more productive to work together and solve our problems uh, than to be attacking each other. Uh, you know, collaboration is great, but uh, you also need money to make a city run and to do the things that you've talked about uh, doing in Detroit. You have a little more wiggle room because of the bankruptcy. Uh, there's federal money for demolition. Uh, but there's a lot of things on your list that, that seem like they need, uh, they need funding. Where is that going to come well, I mean, we're sti we still have the same problems as a city we had before the bankruptcy. You know, we have uh, a, a lot of vacancies in homes. We've got uh, a significant uh, crime problem, and we still haven't uh, got the population growing. Uh, but all of those things uh, we're, uh, we're working on. Yeah. And uh, we've got a balanced budget. we got a little bit of flexibility. And if we keep doing what we're doing, uh, I think you're going to see people and businesses keep moving back into the city. How, how confident are you that uh, the population decline, which is a 50-year trend, can actually turn around? I mean, you have said before, and I keep <laughs> sort of shuddering every time you say it, that, right. that within four years, you want to see that, that number moving in the opposite direction. It has not done that since 1950. Uh, is that well, realistic? Uh, and, well, it, it has to be because I've committed to it. Right. But I do believe by the end of my four years, uh, we'll have the population in Detroit growing. But I think that's what a mayor should be judged on. If more people want to leave your city than come in, what are you doing as a leader? Uh, but I, you know, I, I get data every month from DTE on electrical hookups. Uh, we are shallowing out significantly. In terms uh, of the loss. In terms of people leaving versus those coming. Right. Right. Uh, yeah, I got the most current data. And, and I don't think we're that far away, but uh, we're going to find out. Uh, but it is, it is really the most powerful statistic I saw this year was that 25 neighborhoods in Detroit have started to grow in property values. That tells you you got 25 neighborhoods with more people are coming in than going yeah, out. Yeah, you said that during the, the state of the city, and I wondered, I tried to think it through my head to name those neighborhoods. That's a lot more than I think most people would, would think of. Uh, what, what are some of the places so I, where you're seeing I got that? a nice map of it, I'm very familiar with it, but it's the areas we've been concentrating on with our demolitions and our nuisance abatement suits. But it's it's Rosedale and it's Grandmont and it's East English Village and it's Sherwood Forest and it's Green Acres and it's Bagley uh, and it's an area out near 8 Mile and Evergreen and, and, and it's spaced in there, the neighborhoods that you would think. But the fact that 25 are growing, if I'm sitting here a year from now and 50 are growing in property values, it's not going to seem like such a far-fetched idea because people are moving into downtown and midtown. Sure. The key is we want them to stay in the neighborhoods. Stop I think the loss it, in the so neighborhoods. It's starting Mayor, to happen. Mayor, your challenge is convincing people in the neighborhoods to stay long enough for you to fix 
public safety, to rid the city of blight, to shore up their neighborhoods, to stabilize transportation. Do you get a sense that people are buying in, that they're believing oh. that things are going to get better? There's no question. I mean, you want to spend a day with me, we can go into any neighborhood in this city, I can win without security, and people will come up and talk to me. They will start off by saying, things are better, I'm glad about my street lights, you got the illegal dump site, what about the dead tree? And so they go right on to the next thing we need to do. But the interesting thing is, people expect me to fix it now. I think the expectations are higher for city government. It means the criticism level is higher, but we, we expect that. So are they asking you, what about schools? What are you going to do about schools? They are. What do you say? Uh, what I'm saying is just an honest answer, which is I have so much responsibility right now there's so much work still to do on police and fire and buses that I don't have the capacity to run the schools. On the other hand, I think there could be a role for the mayor in, in a kind of an authorizing role, approving new schools where they're open, getting new schools placed uh, uh, where we don't have any, maybe providing transportation to schools, but not running the but schools But you can't itself. grow this city until something happens with the school, schools. It certainly is an important piece. But I'm very realistic in what am I capable of doing each year, what's our capacity. I really try hard to promise what I know I can deliver, and I just don't have the capacity in the next 12 months uh, to operate schools. Talking a little bit about public safety and taking a look at your budget, there weren't a lot of surprises in, in the budget presentation, but there are increases in spending for police and for fire. What can you tell Detroit residents to expect where that extra money is going to be going and where they're going to be able to yeah, see that? I, I do believe we'll have 200 more police officers on the street this year, and it comes not just from the extra funding, but the unions agreed that we could take the cops who are filling out payroll with pencil and paper right now, the cops who are dispatching cars, move them to the street and bring them in with trained civilians. Now that's easier to say than it is to do. You gotta hire people, you gotta train them, you gotta integrate them into a new system, but we are steadily uh, working on that and every week we're moving uh, more civilians and part-time former police officers into jobs and moving the, the cops back out of the streets. I want to take a look at something else um, from the budget. Taking a look at the property tax revenue was a little bit higher than anticipated, but then the income tax revenue was a little bit lower. How do you account for that discrepancy and that change in both of those areas? I, I think the property taxes are going to continue to go higher. We are seeing people paying their taxes at a higher rate than we have in recent years. The Detroit News did a story about a year ago that half the people in Detroit weren't paying their property taxes. Those numbers are coming up, part because I think we cut the assessments, part because I think people are believing in their neighborhoods and see the property values coming back. So we know why property taxes are going up. Our income tax enforcement process uh, is very weak. And uh, I think we probably got people living in the city who aren't claiming a city address. I think we got people living in the city working in the suburbs where the suburban companies aren't withholding the taxes. I think we have people who are working in the city and claiming they're working from home. I, I think you have people getting 1099s who should be filling out W-2s. And so this year is going to be the year we completely reinvigorate the collection process. Uh, you, uh, early in your administration, you made a real effort to move uh, houses, abandoned houses, from uh, the city's uh, roles to individual uh, owners. Uh, and I know that, that uh, a lot of those people have had a hard time, though, getting mortgages that they need to fix the houses up. You know, it's like uh, you solve one problem and you just sort of uncover another one. <laughs> That's exactly uh, what it is. Uh, and I know that the banks, uh, the traditional lenders, are really not able to help uh, those owners because they can't give more than 100% of the value and the values are, are low. What are some of the solutions you're, you're looking at in terms of trying to make it easier for people to, to do the right thing, to buy these houses and, and take care of them? Well, when the president was in town to visit the Wayne Assembly plan, I met with him afterwards and I showed him the numbers. And he couldn't believe it. 4,000 single family home sales in Detroit last year, and only 400 could get mortgages. 90% right. are, are cash Our sales. Cash. And it's because of the federal regulations. People are paying $800, $900 a month in rent, and they can't get a $500 mortgage. Right. It makes no sense. And so we are in conversations with several national banks, and I'm uh, optimistic we're going to have a program shortly outside of the traditional mortgage process, a home lending process that recognizes that you got a house in East English Village that uh, they want to buy for 50000 the appraisal says it's 40000 but in 2008 it sold for 150000 sure. uh, And so we have to find a way for a few years to get loans in 
until the appraisals come up, and then the market will correct itself. But that's also true of some of the bigger development pro projects that people would like to do downtown. The credit's not as perhaps flowing here as fast as we would like to see it. Um, does that reflect uh, that the uh, a lagging in terms of the belief in Detroit by the national uh, financial institutions? Oh, I, you know, I don't know about that. I mean, I just did a groundbreaking at the uh, Strathmore, 129 mm -hmm. apartment units in a building that's been vacant for uh, 12 years. We were breaking ground in Orleans Landing, uh, down next to the Renaissance mm -hmm. Center on the riverfront, drive you through Midtown. I, I think there is a lot of excitement about Detroit. The home mortgage problem is totally an oddity of the regulations that came out of the last uh, financial crisis, and, and we're going to have to find a different solution to that. But we're not having trouble attracting money for the big developments? It's certainly coming in faster than I've seen it in my lifetime. Uh, whether The business will probably tell you it's not fast enough, uh, but it's pretty remarkable how many deals we see coming across uh, the desk every day. Mayor Duggan, there's been a lot of conversation about the concept of two Detroits. That, that is taking place here in the last year of influx of new people that are moving in, people who have been longtime residents of the city who feel maybe they're trying to grapple with what their place is in this new Detroit. Do you believe in the concept of what a new Detroit is and what have you thought about some of the conversations you've seen take Again, place? You know, I think those conversations may be good for shows like this, uh, but I spend part of every day in a neighborhood. And the folks in the neighborhood are happy about what's going on in downtown and midtown. They just want to know, where do I fit in? Uh, but when you have the Illiches agreeing to hire 51% of all the workers building a new center out of Detroit, that helps. When the, the new 129-unit Strathmore apartment in Midtown commits to 40% of the units being for affordable housing, that helps. Uh, almost all of our new units in downtown and Midtown are going to have at least a 20% affordable component. And so it's, it's our responsibility as city leaders every day to make sure that the recovery that's happening in the city benefits everybody. We're working really hard at it, and I think we'll be successful at it. Mayor Mike Duggan, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you. Okay.